One of the advantages of the smaller ball is ease of handling when you're sacking out your horse. And another one is that smaller people can balance. This blue ball, as I've shown you previously in the earlier clip, is about the size that I would use. I'm about five foot four. And this is the size ball that I would balance on. As I covered earlier, the thing to remember is to, when you pick your feet up, to be able to look out evenly and notice whether your hips slide to the left or right. And this is a very useful tool when you're starting to instruct children. And so now I'm going to have my son Caleb come out, and I'm going to have him demonstrate how this smaller ball fits him. Come on, Caleb. Let's see you balance on this little purple ball. What I encourage the kids to do is sit down on it and kind of back onto it. It's also good when you're, when you're learning. One of the first things I like to tell the kids is that if you're going to make the mistake of falling over backwards, be sure that if you go over backwards, you just lean forward and hug the ball. So practice that one more time, Caleb. Backwards, lean forward like you're going to hug it. That way, should you start to go over backwards, you wouldn't hit your head falling over backwards. Now, what I want to see you do, Caleb, is pick your toes up off the ground and see if you can balance. Good. Now look up. Good. And breathe. Good. And what you can see is the rider's natural tendency to want to clamp the legs together and look down, which are a couple things that happen when people start riding horses. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for the riders to get to the point where they can look up look straight ahead, and you'll notice that there's more of a, a looseness in the bottom of my leg where my legs are not clamping. Can you see that, Caleb? Where I'll open my legs up a little bit? Good. And see if you can pull yours away from the ball. Open up your knees. There you go. And look up. Hold your hand out in front of you and look at your hand right straight in front of you. There you go. And what you can see here is that we're working on getting the rider to break free at the waist. This ball is good for people with shorter legs, and yet it's still sturdy enough to be used with your horse. You're going to see it in a couple later clips while I'm sacking out the horse, and then again when I'm riding the horse. Another advantage of the smaller ball is that when we're working around the horse, sometimes people find the smaller size less intimidating for bouncing. Once again, as I covered, in the section with the blue ball, when you begin introducing a new object to the horse, you want to walk away from the horse and roll it. You can see this mare is showing some curiosity. There's a looseness in the line, and she's following the ball around. That gives me the idea that she is ready to move on. This size is easier for people who want the ability to pick up the ball and control it a little bit more. It's also a nice size to use when you do get the horses broke enough and they're very comfortable with the ball that if you do want to get them trained for something rolling underneath them, this is a preferred size. Once again, the nice thing about the balls is that you do end up being random with them. As you can see, they bounce around in the dirt. And that is what is good about the balls is that they're a little bit more random than what you normally would do And we want to get these horses to the point where they understand random. They understand that not everything behaves exactly like we do when we're doing all of our training. Because as adults, sometimes we have a tendency to do everything so routine that when that deer jumps out or that unusual thing happens, the horses don't know how to handle it. So this little mare, that was the first time the ball has been rolled underneath her. And you can see that she has training that she stayed calm enough that she wasn't running me over, she wasn't pulling away from me, but you did see it bother her. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you a few of the ways that I would work to improve that. And you can see what a difference this small ball can make in that jumpiness. So I noticed that this mare was a little bit jumpy when that ball went to roll underneath her. So I'm going to go back and review an exercise that she knows. And I'm going to use this stick and string here to make sure that she understands that she should stand quietly when strange things rub her over her body. She was a, 
a horse that was raised out in the wild for her first two years of her life. And so as you can see, she gets a little bit touchy about things around her legs. But with this more controlled object, the stick and string, I'm able to sack her out with this and prepare her for the ball. Once again, what I like about the ball is that it is a little bit more random. Right now I'm using rhythm. Rhythm is that ability the horse can predict what's going to happen because it's rhythmic. I hit the ground now, 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 now. And she begins to relax because of the predictability. The thing that is nice about the ball is that it's a little bit more unpredictable, which, as we all know when we're out on the trail, it's the unpredictable that tend to cause us more problems. Now that she seems to be remembering some of her earlier training, I'm going to go ahead and reintroduce the ball. So what I'm working with here on this mare is I'm trying to get her used to the jerky motions that the ball makes. It's a little more unpredictable in its behavior than the stick and string. And that's a good thing because it's going to help me get her more prepared for what might happen out on the trail. And as you can see, she kind of braces herself against being touched. You can see her left leg cocked here. And I'm going to bounce around. You can see this ball is a little bit easier to maneuver underneath your rope hand. But it is a little bit more difficult to control when it hits the dirt in different spots. But I find that to be an advantage because it makes me be sure that my horse is really broke to the different motions. I'm going to roll it underneath her again. You saw less reaction. You also will notice that I was out in front of her. So pay attention the next time you see. I did not roll it underneath her and be standing back beside her. As soon as I prepare to roll it underneath her, I'm going to roll it and step over away so that if she were to shy. Once again, this is something that you don't want to do until your horse is very thoroughly trained to stay out of your space, which is something I work on with my stick and string and my rope halter and my 15 foot or longer rope and making sure that horse really understands staying out of my space. It is a more advanced maneuver, so this is a ball that can be used to progress the horse even more. This small ball can work well for ponies also. If I am using it with a larger horse, it's important to me that the horse has been trained from the ground how to respond if the ball rolls underneath it. Because as the ball gets smaller, you have more risk or chance of that ball rolling underneath the horse. If you're not sure how your horse ro will respond if the ball rolls underneath it, it's important to use a bigger ball such as the red one that won't fit under most horses. The good thing about the small ball is it makes your riding a little more accurate because the horses are able to steer it a lot more uh, quickly. So if, for example, you wanted to play a game of horse soccer, this would be a good choice because you're able to get the ball really moving around the arena and you're able to control the ball quite a bit more in a higher level capacity. The red ball is a little easier to control. This one's going to help you refine your steering a little bit more. The other thing about this is that the horse can put its head over it a much easier. If you have a horse that is sensitive to the ball bumping up against its head, using the smaller size ball makes it easier, less interference with the shank if that happens to bother your horse. This ball, I find more challenging to steer because it requires that I have more training on my horse because to maneuver it is more challenging because it does turn quicker.